Hard RAC Rally produced some top class rally winners. One of these was Kevin Ferber driving a work Peugeot 205. In 1990, Kevin, along with his co-driver Brian Hardy, contested and won the Peugeot Super Cup, collecting the prize of a factory 205 rally to drive on the Lombard RAC Rally. The rally took place over four days, starting in Harrogate and covering approximately 2,000 miles. Spectators were out in force as Kevin and his co-driver Brian Hardy set off early on a damp Sunday morning. Peugeot Talbot Motorsport, as a prize, had given Kevin a left-hand drive 205 rally. This was the first time Kevin had driven a left-hand drive model in competition. The first day is designed specifically for spectators, taking the cars through the parks and stately homes of England. started cautiously around the first stages. The main thing was to have a clean run without any mistakes. As Kevin's main competitor, John Hoagland, drove through the water splash in his work Skoda, Kevin was close behind. Kevin's service crew waited patiently for him to arrive at Woodall Services. Spectators were there to greet him. When Kevin arrived, he reported that his 205 was misfiring, probably due to water getting into the electrical system. After a little investigation, this was soon corrected by his mechanics. Manager and service crew is a vital part of the team, ensuring that the car is kept competitive and reliable at all times. Even though Kevin had had a misfire, he was still able to take 19 seconds off class leader John Hoagland. As a happier, Kevin and Brian drove off to Chatsworth House, 25,000 spectators had already gathered to greet them. First Peugeot through, Swedish driver Håkan Eriksson, driving the 1.9309 GTI. Trying very hard, Soren Nielsen, driving the Mitsubishi Galant, who sadly was to drop out the following day. Paul Franklin driving the 205 GTI with a 1.6 engine, Kevin's other teammate. Jeremy Eason, nice and smooth, and this Kozel Sierra, 4x4. And now Kevin Ferber, trying hard and determined to put a good time in here through the chapter stage. As Kevin finishes the stage, we manage to catch up with Brian, Kevin's co-driver, at Chesterfield Services. Right, Brian, four stages out the way. What are you thinking now? Well, to be perfectly honest at the moment, it's a bit of a hassle to the co-driver. The traffic's horrendous. There's thousands of spectators there. We've just come out of Chatsworth House. There must have been at least 30,000 people in there. So we're battling our way to try and get people as much service time as we can, give the lads a chance to look over the car. Um, obviously it's just the start of the rally, um, but it's very easy to make a mistake in the early early stages. The um, roads are really slippy this morning and um, basically we just kind of have a clear run ready to start the rally proper tomorrow. As night drew in, the cars pressed on through the last stage at Clumber Park before returning to Harrogate for the night halt. With over 600 watts of light on their cars, the night stages present no problem to the drivers. With 
With a good drive through the very slippery dark stages, Kevin was lying in third place by the end of the first day and only seconds behind the leader. The next day the cars took to the North Yorkshire Forest where the real rallying started. The treacherous conditions made it very hard for drivers to keep the cars on the track. Leading the showroom class up to 1600cc was Robbie Head driving the Honda Civic. Car number 63, Steve Smith. He was now leaving the privateer section of the rally. Turbo 4x4. Car number 40, Dave Metcalf, leading 1600cc Group A. In class 5, the Czech Zebra was setting the pace, but this was not to last long for he suffered gearbox failure in Dolby Forest, causing him to retire. Also in Dolby, Zebra's teammate John Hoagland suffered gearbox problems, causing him to lose two minutes. 58 seconds behind Zebra was Kevin and Brian, who were working hard to keep the Peugeot on the high-speed tracks of Yorkshire. As Kevin and Brian drive back to Harrogate for the night, the class positions had changed. Kevin Thurber was now in first place, with John Hoagland in second, and Simon Chapman driving a Vauxhall Nova Swing in third. The third day took the cars up to Scotland with an overnight stop at Newcastle. Having found time to wash the car, Robbie Head was still pushing on. He now had a commanding lead in the up to 1600 class. Ladies world champion Louise Aitken Walker was driving extremely well in the Vauxhall Astra. Paul Franklin, although having suffered one or two problems early on, was now pushing hard and was lying second in class. The largest car on the rally was driven by Gavin Cox, a massive Opel Monza 3 litre. We caught up with Kevin at the start of this stage and asked him how he felt it was going. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning. How's it been going today then? Like? Uh, it's been on and off. The lads have put a new gearbox in this morning from last night. Uh, the competition has died away this morning. Luckily, as we were pushing hard uh, in the middle of yesterday afternoon, Johnny Ogwin had a problem, a gearbox problem, which set him back uh, a couple of minutes. And early this morning, our other main competitor, and his Nova's had a, a problem which has set him back a minute. So, luckily we've got a class lead of nearly three minutes now. So all we have to do is just soldier on and keep him from. He's quite confident at winning. Yeah, yeah, at the moment the class looks pretty good. puncher. This would not have been too bad, but as they were changing the wheel, the car fell off the jack, leading spectators to lift the car up. This led to them losing four minutes and the class lead. The cars battled on through the evening, driving through the final stages of Killer Kielda, one of the most punishing stages on the rally. He had 
to keep up the pressure here if he was going to regain the class lead. At the end of the day, Kevin and Brian were pleased to hear that they had regained the class lead from John Hoagland by nearly one minute. The service at Selkirk was a perfect time to grab a cup of tea and have a chat with Peugeot Motorsport Director Des Odell. Brian took the opportunity to check his pace notes with Keith Ball. The final day took the cars up to Scotland, where the overnight freeze had made the stages very dangerous. World Championship driver Didier Aureo was unaffected by the ice and his four-wheel drive Lantia Turbo. As Dave Medcart heads the lead in the Class 6, Paul Franklin was not far behind in second place, driving the 1.6 205 Peugeot. Ben's difficult, as one Japanese driver was to find out. pressure on him to keep the lead was still able to take 19 seconds off Hovland's time. <laughs> on to the next stage and the big Toyota Sleekers was still leading the overall rally. With over 300 brake horsepower and four-wheel drive, they're able to leave the two-wheel drive car standing. For drivers, every second counts. Even for Gavin Cox in a big tank-slapping Monza, powering his way through the Castle Hall stage. As Kevin pushed on hard here to keep him first place, things were to change. Disaster struck. His gearbox blew up, leaving only second gear, allowing Hoagland to overtake him in his Skoda. We caught up with a depressed Kevin and Brian at Carlisle. After... Right, you've got me up to stage 35, haven't you?
think about it, is it? I mean, we're quite aware behind you. It's very slippy, it's soon Scandinavian driving, and uh, it's a hard man to beat. So, we're quite depressed at the moment. Well, you know, probably the problem with the gearbox, uh, which wiped out our lead this morning. We had a lead of uh, okay. almost 19 seconds. The gearbox, we drove 12 miles with it with only second and fourth gear. Um, and then we were 16 seconds behind them. We changed the gearbox, boys did it in about 25 minutes. Um, went into the last two stages. Obviously, Kevin's been a bit more gentle with the car just to get the feel of it. We dropped six more seconds to it, so we're 22 seconds behind with four stages to go. So we've got 32 stage miles left, 22 seconds behind. I've asked the team manager what he thinks, they're happy enough for me to risk it. So I'm going to go out and risk crashing the car, they want to win it, and we'll decide it. So we're going to go for it on the next two, see what happens. So Kevin has 22 seconds to make up in four stages. Even if this means he risks crashing the car, he's determined to win. As John Horgan flies past, Kevin is continually taking seconds off his time. Had Kevin won, or had John taken the title? As they finish the last stage in Grindhill Forest, we caught up with them in the final time check at Newby Bridge, where the tension was reaching a climax as Brian tried to sort out the final stage time with the marshals. Come on, just play the game. I'm trying to, we're trying to be legal. Knowing that they had now won their class, Kevin and Brian headed for their final service. The Newby Bridge service provided the last opportunity for service crews to thoroughly check over the car before the long run in to the finish at Harrogate. A slight problem here could cost the driver the whole rally and it's worth taking a little bit of time out just to make sure everything's right. Kevin's service train were waiting patiently for him to arrive. As Didier Oriel drives away with a satisfied fifth place overall. Kevin's teammate Paul Franklin waits with the rest of the team, press and management to congratulate Kevin and Brian as they arrive. It's all smiles from Kevin and Brian. They've reached the final service area. To finish the RAC rally is great. To win your class for practice team is a dream come true. We spoke to Peugeot Motorsport Director Des O'Dell. That's right, he's uh, been doing this uh, championship that I'm running for these young British drivers. We've got three of them on this rally and you've seen how well they've done. But Peugeot's doing his bit for motorsport for the British young people. And Kevin's done a fantastic job. To take time out of Johnny Osborne, such an experienced driver, like he's been doing over the last few stages, is out of this world fantastic. serviced and cleaned, Kevin and Brian drove back to the finish ramp at Harrogate, pleased with the feeling of their result. 
and the prospects of driving for Peugeot Talbot in the coming year. After many years of dedicated effort, Kevin Ferber finally won his class on the Lombard RAC Rally, driving the Peugeot Motorsport 205 Rally. 1990 would be the first time in 18 years that Skoda had not taken a class win on the rally. But for Kevin, this is hopefully only the first. Kevin, first of all, I must congratulate you on your excellent results on the Lombard RAC Rally. Thank you very much, Alan. Rallying is a very expensive sport. How do you manage to finance it? Yes, rallying is a very expensive sport. I was lucky that in the early days, my parents were able to financially support uh, the lower grade events that we were actually competing in. But once we've moved up to international uh, type events and obviously more lucrative uh, bonuses were being offered to us, that enabled us to stay at the higher level. Uh, it's fair to say that within motorsport we have been successful and along the way we've gained quite a, a bit of prize money and, and that has been the biggest uh, financial input to our budgets through the years but also uh, along the way we've managed to secure uh, quite fi quite good financial deals from different manufacturers that have actually backed us um, you know, from chocolate companies to, to actually the place that I used to work for so along the way there's been quite a lot of interest in what we've been doing via other companies. What do you think the future holds for you now? Um, hopefully for the future we're in a very good position at the moment driving for Peugeot Talbot Sport. It's uh, the major manufacturer of cars within England and obviously it's a great privilege to be driving for that team. So the future looks good for the next uh, few years. Um, but ultimately to be really successful in motorsport one must find uh, a big sponsor to personally back uh, a, an individual's efforts and such as Marlborough or Shell Oil, or a big company such as that. But maybe that's a bit too much to hope for immediately. So we're looking for uh, smaller sponsorship deals to come from maybe several different companies to give us a good footing to maybe move on to uh, real high grade international rallies, possibly world championship rallies, or definitely to stay at the highest level of international competition within English rallying.